uh, Thomas Wayne, again, you know, he's uh, the Batman of Gotham at this point under Bane. Um, even though he appears to be a villain here, there's very, and, and again, I don't know what was leading up to this story, but you can see that there is a lot of concern Thomas has for his alternate reality son, Bruce. You know, it, it, I've so been waiting for you to set me up to talk to this, and I, I so I, I didn't want to bring it up too soon, but I this is probably the best part of the book for me. I I want to at least give our audience an idea of kind of the what happened with the all. I mean, just just to kind of lay this out here because the next series of three has my absolute favorite issue in this whole uh set of 11. Mm -hmm. But the quick and dirty of it is is that the reason Thomas Wayne uh, is Batman in the Flashpoint universe is because Bruce gets killed instead of his parents in the alleyway. So that obviously creates a diverging timeline and sets uh, Thomas on a path to become a Batman who is a very brutal uh, crime fighter. And, but not, it's not just that it's as he comes back over here into uh, Bruce's universe, he realizes Bruce is alive and he wants, he wants to save his son. There's very real, real concern. So I'll go ahead and let you have the floor uh, as to what, what are your thoughts here? I, this is the best part of, I don't totally love city of Bane, but I love this element of it. Right. Um, Thomas Wayne <clears throat> has been Batman in the flashpoint universe for a long time. And he has killed a lot of people and he is, and it's taken his soul. He no longer sees the virtue of being Batman. He sees it as a curse. And he sees his son as somebody who has opportunities. He has choices. You know, in the Flashpoint universe, like, that's a world going over the over the falls in a barrel. Um, and so he's just sort of, you know, it's kind of like the uh, Injustice universe or whatever, where, like, they're just, they're just fighting to survive at this point. There's no world really left to, to save in this whatever universe we're in in the in the rebirth um there is a universe left to say there's a whole you know he doesn't have to be batman he can be bruce wayne he can save his soul he doesn't have to do this he doesn't ha he doesn't have to live with the futility of being batman and perpetually failing because it never ends you know batman never kills the joker never kills the riddler he never kills penguin he never kills Mad Hatter. He never kills Scarecrow. So they just keep all breaking out of Arkham over and over and over again. We're long past the days of I <coughs> I became a mass vigilante in the street because the mob had so completely corrupted the justice system that I was leveling the playing field. Now it's just it's a constant, you know, fighting a murderous circus of crazy right. people. <laughs> And it never and it never stops, and they just get crazier over time, and there's just more of them. Um, and so he says, so he's like, "I'm hurting you to help you. I'm I did this to put you in a position of rethinking this entire Batman thing because it's gotten away from you. You've gotten away from yourself, and you need to remember who you are. You're you're not Batman. You're Bruce Wayne." Right. Be Bruce Wayne. You are one of the lucky souls in this world who has found true love. You have, the, you have cat. You have, you know, you have <laughs> Selena Kyle who loves you more than life itself. Go be with her. You have Dick and Damien and who, I can't remember the chick who plays who's Batwoman. Um, you have Barbara or whatever iteration of Batgirl this is. You have family. You have a life. Go live it. Stop dedicating yourself to the suicide crusade. And if I have to, you know, and, be, and as your father, and boy, do I empathize with this. As your father, I'm willing to be the bad guy and hurt you so that you'll understand that what you're doing is wrong. Mm. 
And I really, it's one of the few like deft elements of writing Tom King has it because I, I tend to think Tom King, and we didn't talk about it yet, but it, like his his dialogue between Batman and Catwoman is awful. <laughs> it's just. It, it 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 sounds it's Robert's new last couple of months everything out of Robert's mouth is it's some adolescent tween's Tumblr post, um, <laughs> Tumblr ramblings. <laughs> that's kind of what it reminds me of. Like when Batman and Catwoman talk to each other, it feels like overly romanticized. You know, it feels like my daughter's mangas that she reads. Oh you yeah, know, like there should be a heart. Okay. Bubble, there should be like hearts around the the speech bubbles. Um. You know, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like those characters. It feels like someone's romance novel interpretation of Batman and Catwoman. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of his, I think a lot of Tom Tom King kind of reminds me of Kevin Smith, uh, Guardian uh, Guardian Angel, or Guardian Devil. Uh, the Daredevil. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that was dense. Yeah, mm. he likes the sound of his own writing. Um, but the stuff with Thomas Wayne, I think was on point and was actually handled well. Right. Right. I mean, this is a guy that sees his own failures. I think he, you know, as, as driven as he was to be the Batman of his universe, Mm -hmm. Thomas comes over to ours and, and now he has a son that he wants the best for, you know, he didn't have a son over there. He lost his son. I think it's about legacy. I think it's about legacy. It's about, you know, did I save anybody? Did right. did I do what I set out to do? No. Well, can I at least save my son? I have a second right. shot. At, I couldn't save him from Joe Chill. I'm going to save him this time. Yeah. He, he looks at his own failures as well as being Batman and sees that his son has gone down the same path and does not want that for him at all. He right. wants him to be like, okay, you, you we need all, to we understand. All want, we all want better for our children. I don't exactly. Want my, I don't want my son to turn out like me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very real thing, and I agree with you. I think Tom King addresses this and and approaches it and uses it well because mm-hmm. you know now Bruce has a father figure uh, that is in, in his own twisted way trying to make sure that this kid does not do the same thing. And he, granted, it's. Uh, you know, I, I assume he probably tried to talk to him at some point in the past and then Bruce wasn't having it. Uh, and then as Thomas went on, he's like, OK, well, I've got to take every every ounce of action that I can to try and make sure this Bruce gonna, gets out of. Yeah, this, this is going to hurt me more than it does you. Right. Right. So. But yeah, those are my notes for these three issues. I really didn't have anything else. I mean, really, we don't have much. Uh, we have the Bat family try to take down Thomas Wayne, but Thomas Wayne, as he's laying in a beaten, bloody pulp, he gets up and the rest of the Bat family are kind of like, okay, should we show him mercy or not? And he then turns the tables on him. And he, uh, there's a great couple lines too. How about useless like, is the Bat family, by the way? There's like 80 of them. And they couldn't take down one old man. They they beat the crap out of him too. Mm. Um, but there's you mentioned how Bruce gets children to fight for him, and that's what Thomas sees too. Right. Thomas sees that, and he's like, "This is wrong. How do you guys not realize that this is not <laughs> what's supposed to be? This should not be going on." I'm at, I I just have to imagine that. Like, hear me out. I would like to take this fourteen year old, right? Train him to be a ninja. And have him beat up muggers. Yeah, they, 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 you'd get arrested for that anywhere else yep. in the world. Again, a, you a, know, another Robin slash Dick Grayson slash Nightwing is a beloved character, but in reality, it was child abuse. Yeah, yeah, you are. And, and Thomas is sitting there going, "How do you guys not see this? How do you yeah. un- not understand?" Now, granted, we find out later that you know he kind of did the same thing with. So the Selena Kyle of his universe, but mm-hmm. again, it might have been a mistake that he realized was wrong and is like, okay, my son cannot continue to do this. I've got right. to stop him in some way. So, any other thing, anything left on your plate that you want to get off your chest here about these three issues? Thomas Wayne is trying to save his own soul by saying his son saving his son's life, and his son will not cooperate. No, <laughs> his son will not. The moral of this story. That's the truth. 
Let's try it again. In the so where we left off, Bane and Batman were squaring off. Uh, Bane and Bruce, I should say, when Thomas shows up and shoots both of them. So they were on a cliff. We got a little bit of a cliffhanger there with a, uh, issue eighty-two. Going on to issue eighty-three. In the aftermath of Alfred's death at the hands of Bane, Bruce mourns and reflects on the life and sacrifices of his loyal butler and father figure. This issue is a heart-wrenching exploration of Bruce's grief, and he reads a final letter from Alfred urging him to carry on and find happiness despite the tragedies he's endured. Can I tell you how I would... If you put the panels of him and Selina against the panels of his reaction to Alfred's death, I would more believe that he was in love with Alfred than I was Selena, than he was with <laughs> Selena. <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, issue 84. As Bruce confronts his father, Thomas Wayne, readers are taken through flashbacks revealing Thomas's twisted motivations and his belief that Bruce should abandon the cow f- for a life of peace. The issue builds tension between father and son, setting up their inevitable showdown as Thomas seeks to reshape Bruce's future, even if it means breaking him. And yet, just to kind of throw this out there, issue 84 starts with them getting ready to square off. Backstory, 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 backstory. Then like the final panel is them getting ready to square off. Um, So, and finally in issue 85, this was a weird issue uh, as far as like structure goes. And I might bring that back up here in a few seconds, but Mm -hmm. um, in the climactic conclusion of city to city of Bane, Bruce and Selena Kyle team up to defeat Bane. Well, we already knew they defeated Bane. De- de- to defeat Thomas Wayne, uh, reclaiming Gotham and reasserting Bruce's commitment to, to his role as Batman. After the battle, Bruce and Selena reaffirm their love and consider a life together, while Bruce reflects on the nature of resilience and hope. The issue closes on a somber yet hopeful note, signaling both an end and a new beginning for Batman. All right. So, 83 is the you know when batman all these other issues as we're leading up to this batman has no idea alfred's dead has no clue he's running around gotham he's fighting uh villains he's fighting bane with uh catwoman at his side but uh, all this time he just believes that damien has been captured if i remember correctly and then when he awakens after getting shot in a dark room sitting across from the dead body of alfred um, yeah, man, it was, uh, and the art and the dialogue really captured some emotion there. Did you have any feelings or thoughts on that? Yeah, the stuff with Batman and Alfred was heartbreaking. Like, I didn't have um, an emotional reaction to much of this book. Like, I, I, I just said I like the stuff with um, Thomas Wayne and Bruce. But other than that, like, none of the Bane stuff moved me at all. Nothing, none of the Selena Kyle Batman stuff moved me at all him reacting to alfred's death like that was truly heart-wrenching like you know me i always see things in in in, like as a movie or a tv show like i pictured batman's reaction to alfred's death in my head as like a movie scene and like it made me tear up a little bit like that brought some legitimate emotion out of me Mm -hmm. yeah dude it it was rough because as you're the dialogue throughout this whole thing, as you're just watching Batman mm-hmm. react and try to get out of there, it's just a letter uh, that was written by Alfred uh, prior, obviously prior, shortly prior to his death, because he's talking about how, um, you know, Thomas had captured him and holding him hostage and blah, blah, blah. But, well, but go ahead. You know, Alfred has also been trying to get Batman to give this up for the longest time. Basically saying like, I think one of the, like, that's like the most Alfred thing Alfred does is try to r- remind him you were a human being once before you right in this this right. fucking you know all all killing fighting machine all like, consumed yeah like i think you know alfred is alfred's not just like a father figure in terms of he was an adult mentor and made sure batman brushed his teeth and you know wiped his ass you know he was also like this is how you become a man this you know and when bat in those early like year one years when batman's when bruce wayne's doing the batman thing there's alfred going watch you don't go over the falls in a barrel you know watch mm-hmm. you don't completely lose your humanity to this because i can already see that that's starting to happen um you know and you and now mind you remember we talked about tom king breaking the furniture mm-hmm. he's now set it in place that he's taken that away which is interesting well, well uh, even more interesting than that i think is that he replaced and I don't know what this says about Tom King. Um, he replaced that person in Bruce's life with 
Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah, Catwoman is is his new Alfred. Catwoman yeah. is his like new sounding board, his new um not mentor, but he's somebody there to be like to remind his Jiminy Cricket, like you know, guiding remind, light. Yeah. Rem- <clears throat> <clears throat> She's there to remind Bruce to not lose his humanity. Right, right. And and the thing is, is that that's when you compare Alfred and Selena Kyle, mm. um, I mean, one's better to look at for sure. But, uh, you I know, mean, the problem like is, is you're being very judgy. Judgy. Like, uh, you know, hey, I, well, I, what's, I just said one. You don't know which one I'm talking about. So, you know, you don't want to bang old men. Doesn't mean old men aren't bangable, Jesse. I didn't say, Here our Lord, I didn't say anything Lord. about that. I didn't say anything about that. Okay. Um, but w- what I'm saying is, is that you mm-hmm. you are replacing her, and she does not. She's not like the most. Um, oh my goodness, probably not got the best resume to do something like that. Oh, she's so uh, funny because she, she's like, I stole a diamond. It's like after everything I've done, after all the ways I helped you, like, don't I deserve this diamond? He's like, no, because <laughs> you stole it. See, you don't you uh, shouldn't have stolen. Th- you shouldn't have stolen things. She's like, <sighs> oh, you. All right. <laughs> See, seems like a dumb rule. Like, uh, that's the yeah. kind. Of stuff, that's the kind of stuff where I like their relationship when they're doing when they're doing the kind of overly poetic, pseudo poetic you know, Tumblr romance, bat and cat stuff. I want to eat a gun. <laughs> well, anyway, um, we watch, yeah, we watch Batman go through grief and rage and yeah. all he wants is a piece of like, just to punch his dad right in the face. I mean, who doesn't um, want to punch their dad in the face? 